Okay. I don't have to get close. This is a good mic. We need these. And, and what, I need these. <laughs> uh, I pretty much know everybody here. And, you know, we're going to be on Facebook also live or recorded or whatever. Uh, my name is Roger Baker. Um, there's a group of us down here that are doing a grassroots effort to bring a new governor into New Mexico. Um, I met Karen a year and a half ago at a 2A rally up in San Jose, Santa Fe. I was going to say San Jose. Anyways, ever since then I've been following her. I've uh, been watching her spirit and uh, she came down here and she now she was running for governor. She came down, we talked and talked and talked and talked and she's been down here four times unlike the other governor, governor, governor gubernatorial candidates and uh, she's a fighter. Um, so what I would like, I'm just going to make this brief, what I'd like to do is introduce our next governor of New Mexico. Karen Bedoni. <laughs> oh, hello, Yat Eh. And this mic is so cool. It's nice and sensitive. Usually we get mics that you have to scream into. <clears throat> and then you wake up Texas and Arizona, and guess what? They all know Bedoni's running for governor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll try not to um, to scare El Magrodo too too much. But um, my name is Karen Madoni. I am a Navajo woman. Uh, you saw my video. It was playing inside the church, and thank you so much for doing that for me. Um, that video was produced by my children. Um, a lot of the shots, my seven-year-old was holding the camera. So God blessed be with the kids on their hands and their minds, because we say that these the children are always on their phones. They need to get off their phones. But I've learned to harness their minds and how they operate. So all um, the photographs that were taken was all by my daughter, Laura. And um, all the images and stuff, my 12-year-old helps me with. She helped me learn how to cut video. Um, we've been going through this whole process together as a homeschool event, and so this whole part of my campaign was launched in the heart of my home, right at our kitchen table. So we are a family of, um, oh, here comes my husband, so I, come on in. <laughs> I was hoping that he'd make it. He's, uh, he was out um, in the rain, so he's probably, um, is he wet? No, he's okay. He changed his clothes. <laughs> Yeah, our truck starter went out at the hotel um, this morning, so we were running around getting parts, and so he's here now. But thank you. I'm so glad that, you know, he's able to be here to listen to me. So we are um, Navajo, full-blooded, um, uh, from the Navajo tribe up north, and the way we say our tribe is Dene. And Dene literally translated from our language means the people. We are raised in... in um, born and bred to understand that you are selfless and you're in who you are, in your being, in your life. Um, as a woman, uh, my life doesn't matter as much as me fighting for the future generations. Your children's children's children is what we have to make sure and ensure that we, we map this out for them. So my race for governor has been then within that theme to know that we are fighting for an unborn America. Our republic is so precious right now that we can lose it at any time. Right now we're seeing it slip away from us. We are a republic. We are based on representative um, representatives from your area. And with that being that the American dream can belong to anybody, even if you're born poor, even if you're a Native American, even if you um, grew up in the federal system and the dormitories, even if you um, were pulled out of um, the, the worst parts of socialism and communism, you can come back in America. You can start businesses and you can raise your children the way you see fit. You can have a say-so in how your body is being impacted, how your mind is being impacted. And you are, you have a say-so if you want to have prosperity and blessings in your life. So it's important that we, we see that, that, line, that linear thinking I'm trying to give to the people that is our responsibility but also our choice to have blessings or to have um, consequences. And it's a very big um, a line that I've drawn there for my life. And here I am running for governor now. Um, so I'll introduce myself in Navajo. And it's always out of respect for people that have Navajo or Native American blood in you. And being that we've been here for so long, um, 150 years in New Mexico, that a lot of you probably have um, Native American ancestry in you. So, Karen Bedoni, Nishle, 
Hashkan is ohe bashish chin, tolini dashi che, ashihin dashi nale. And I just said that I'm from the water, the people near the water were water carriers. Um, we're allowed to um, carry water and also bless it. So I bring in the holy water into our, our ceremonies. And that water will help to replenish people. And usually in my prayers, when I bring it in, I have to pray over it <clears throat> with you know tobacco and medicine. And I always, you know, pray directly to Jesus and, you know, and God. And I always ask that the water comes and it fills your hollow parts, whether you're lonely, whether you're starving, whether you're heartbroken, that the water will flow within you and heal you and your mind and your soul and your spirit. And usually it happens. And um, when I started my campaign, I went east because everything in the, uh, the, the beginning of anything good starts in the east where the sun rises. And I went to a place called Grady, New Mexico the smallest little town I could ever find. And there um, I got my first check when I ran for Congress. And I thought, where's Grady, New Mexico? And they heard about me. I have to go find this place. And I always laugh and I tease them because I say I went there and I passed it twice. It was so small. And I, you blink, you miss it. And um, there's no cell service. So you drive along until you catch service. And then you say, oh, I passed it. So you turn around and you go again. And I realized the water tower that I passed had Grady on it. And this was it. Farmers. Someone heard my message. And I found them. And I said, what is your foundation? Why did you, you know, find me interesting? And they said that because of what you're talking about, the land, the people. We the people, the Constitution. So I, I realized in my congressional run that it was really important that um, I connect with you. And as I went on that congressional run, I, um, I realized that nobody was fighting for you. The reason why I was running, it was to change federal policy that injured where I was from in my area because we're so communistic and socialism has overtaken us now. It's, you know, it's communistic. We can't, um, we, we haul water because we can't even get water to our home. We haul wood because we have natural gas. Even though the line is running there, we can't tap into it. We don't have it. Um, we homeschool our family because indoctrination is now happening in all the schools. Um, right now you're seeing critical race theory and all kinds of things come in. We already had that. Um, we don't go to the hospital if we don't have to because IHS is mandated by the federal government. You walk in there, they will stick you. It was not your choice. And during the 70s, um, there was the big um, sterilization movement uh, upon the women. So every time you went in, they asked you, do you want to use, lose your uterus? And sign here if you do and they would sterilize you, and it was a depopulation tactic. And I didn't really understand all this, and um, so we have medical for all, and that was a big policy issue during the Obama um, run when he was saying you can keep your doctor and you know all this different things was happening, and they say, yeah, medical for all, we're gonna make it fair for everybody. We have that. It's a very mediocre system. They are not curing anything, they're just medicating you and keeping you in the game as long as they can. And from what I understood, a sick Indian is always worth more than a healthy one. And right now, in funeral and burial expenses, a dead Indian is worth more than a live one. And as I went through my congressional run and carrying my values and knowing how bad federal policy was, when I came out to <clears throat> all you good people, I realized those same policies they put upon Indian country was coming for you. And nobody was talking about it because you didn't know what it was really for. And I say this because historically, um, Indian country, we were rounded up. Um, we were conquered, a very conquered people. Here in New Mexico, the Navajo people, um, the first thing they did to us to make sure they got, you know, gained control was they burned our food and um, all of our, our slaughtered the livestock, burned all the fields, and they starved us out. And that's how they rounded the women up first. And then the elderly and the children all came, and the men were the last to come. When you get there, the first thing they do is they disarm you. They remove all your weapons. We saw that the last cycle. Second Amendment came up there. Everybody was upset, SB5, and that's where I met Roger, was up at Santa Fe, and I was standing there fighting, fighting hard for our Second Amendment rights. It's an absolute right. And as a Native American, I will tell you, the federal government will never guarantee your protection or your freedom. You will never get it back.
So as a Second Amendment advocate, it is an extension of who I was from the arrowhead to the arrow, to the, you know, to the rifles and now to what we have. And people say, well, I don't think citizens should have military grade weapons or assault rifles, you know, and those are just adjectives they add on to it to limit us. And it's not, it's not right because it's just to bear arms, it doesn't matter what it is. And for me, a projection into the future again for the children's children's children, we don't know what's going to happen in 50 years, 100 years, what we're going to be up against. We do not limit ourselves today because we're too scared of what's happening now. We have to get tough and we have to iron out what's happening to us today, but you never legislate to impact and cripple the future. And so the Second Amendment. Thank you. So the Second Amendment was very um, near and dear to my heart. So you see my campaign photograph go up. The first ones I did, um, it's on my webpage on the last part of it. And I'm holding a rifle. Her name is Irene, and she's wrapped in an American flag. I named her after my brother. Um, he, he was also, he's, I think he's not active right now. He might be still active in the National Guard. But he went and served um, three tours um, during the whole Desert Storm Iraq um, deal. And his rifle was, um, his, his weapon was named Irene. And out of respect and love for him, I named mine. I was not allowed to enlist. I wanted to go to the military so bad. All you veterans out there, thank you so much for your service. I admire you. I wasn't allowed to go. My Navajo name translated means one that goes to war and then returns. So I'm not supposed to go and lose. I'm supposed to go, but I got, ready to enlist out of high school. I wanted to be a Marine, you know, like my code talkers. <clears throat> and Grandpa told me, you know, that I got jerked out of that line so fast. He says, this is not your war. And she has you, and he says, my baby, um, this is not it. He says, when the time comes, you'll know. I thought I would enlist later on, maybe after college, be an officer somewhere, you know, do something great. And I never did. I ended up having children. Now look where I am. I'm in the biggest war right now against good and evil. And here I am fighting for you. I'm fighting for the veterans. I'm fighting for mothers, fathers, children, our education system, our churches, our right to speak, our, our First Amendment, our right to pray, our right to get on our hands and knees and, and, and give it all to God. Because you know what? If we, will, if we lose our country, we lose everything. And that's why the Code Talkers went. They believe that if we lose this country, we will lose everything. So it, they knew that back then that we had to band together to be great Americans. That's why I'm not a victim. I don't sit here and, and, and walk among you and say, you stole my land. That's the old thinking. That's the democratic um, indoctrination. I am a healed Native American. I was born in this time, not in 1800s. And I'm here to tell you that I do forgive the people. I believe that if you work the land and you stay here and you put your roots down, it should, be, should belong to you. Just like us, we weren't here you know, when Earth was created. We came along and we ended up here first, supposedly, but I think God owns the land and all the resources under us and it's given unto the people. So, that's who I am, and right now we're looking at policy. So we go back to policy, we start talking about the Green New Deal. That's what really triggered me. The Green New Deal is very scary. Um, it's about com coming after our food. And it's the first part of conquering a people. They're coming after our cows and cattle and everything. And it's tied into um, property and taxation, and they're calling it energy and carbon credits, and it's really scary when you read it. And then after that, the 30 by 30 is coming in. It was signed into executive order by Joe Biden um, January 21st. And when you read that document, it's scary. Um, they want 30% of all lands and water to be under federal control by 2030. My question is, is where are they going to get this? Because 34% of New Mexico is already controlled by the federal government from our missile ranges to the forest to, you know, water rights. All of it is controlled by that already. So what are we going to do? They're coming 30% of our property, private ownership. They're in infiltrating us. That's why Joe Biden has now telling the banks, if you have huge transactions in your bank account, you are flagged as someone that moves money. And they're going to say, well, we got to make sure it's clean money. No, they're coming for you if you make lucrative um, money because capitalism is actually the greatest weapon against socialism and communism. That's why they're tracking us now. 
but actually the 30 by 30 is a preface because before Kamala Harris took the vice president's seat, she pushed in another bill through the Senate. It was called the 50 by 50. And it was also pushed by Deb Holland in the House. And this one is gonna be 50% of all lands and water by 2050. Now, if you look at that and you add in the 34%, we're gonna be at 84% underneath federal control. And then after that, that the remainder amount is actually the Indian reservations here. So 100% of New Mexico will be controlled by the federal government. They are creating a reservation for you. And this is what the scariest thing is, is they always go after you medically. That's when they know that they can actually conquer you. You're seeing it with the vaccinations. It has nothing to do with the actual virus. It has to do with crippling you, making you unable to work, unable to fight, worry, scared, and fears which drive in the whole entire thing. The next thing they do is they always control your education system to make sure they can control the future generations. They're coming for our education system. You see it in CRT. You see it in right now what's happening. And I implore people, if you have children, you need to pull them out of school right now and homeschool them and keep them very close to you until we get through this mess. I have to win this seat for us to start to unravel this and pull the 10th Amendment, and you're going to have to have the hardest working governor that is a warrior on this battlefield, and I have to pull that 10th Amendment, and I'm going to have to whip the federal government with it. We have to parent them and push it back, because right now they cannot fix anything. They can't even cure us in our medical, you know, opposition that we see, and right now our border is being decimated, and we've had a crisis since I was a child. Every administration until Trump has actually tried to impact that crisis. Right now, I think if I can do this, we can put, implement a plan that would have the most beautiful um, border plan that would be so tough for them to penetrate. Um, I believe in a border system like the Navajo Hogan. It's round, it has one door, one way to get in, one way to get out. You come in, you take your place, you learn the, the rules of the house. You eat, we'll feed you and give you water. If you don't like your place and you don't like the rules, then you enter the way you came in. And that's my immigration plan, and I'm hoping that we can bring in some good, potential, new Americans, but the ones that aren't vetted, that come here for bad things, bad policy, and, and for gain, we don't need them here. But we need to make sure every one of them that comes through pledges allegiance to this country and our flag to make sure that we do not allow them to overtake our country. Because it's not about you know coming in um, as an award, it's more about infiltration which is kind of scary right now because the refugees are coming in and they're giving them citizenship within two weeks. They're here. And they're not getting educated enough to know our constitution and who we are and our value system to know that we are a country based on God and Jesus. So this is important that we understand this, but we have plans. And I have been moving around New Mexico consistently looking for a solution, and our solutions are stacking up. And we're ready. We're ready to take the state over, and we're using New Mexicans to do it. Now, people ask me, well, why don't you follow these other candidates? <clears throat> Most of the candidates that are running against me don't inspire me. They're inadequate. They're incomplete. They are not born from here. A lot of them are carpetbaggers. They don't know what it means when I'm screaming in the night because I am so scared because I'm worried for our children. They don't say the things that need to be said. They don't say that we need a forensic audit and that our elections were stolen and that President Trump should be there helping us fight this evilness. Instead, they ushered it right in, and MLG up there is taking you know, control, um, I guess, actions from powers that be because what she does is so weird that she follows other blue states. So there's no critical thinking, there's no common sense, there's no we the people, there's no service for us, not from this woman. So I need to be put into the general election, and I've been running this campaign as hard as I can. I drive miles and miles. If you track me on Facebook and watch me, I'm out working them, out talking them, and out greeting them, and I'm trying to make sure that we can, we have a chance. And I see it, and I believe it, and I believe God is with me. So I was sitting here, when I walked in, I was by myself, you know, to check out the place, and I was really humbled to be here in your church. I'm so thankful that you give me this opportunity and the, and the grace that you've shown me to feed me. That's big for where I come from, is when you have a guest and you feed them. It's the most utmost respect, and I'm, I'm humbled and I'm very thankful to that. And when I came in, 
scripture hit me. And we have 33 counties in this state, 33 that need to do something. And I come from the third district, CD3, and that's where I got my start. And I am on the job working. So I looked it up, and it's Job 33.3. And it says, my words come from upright heart. My lips sincerely speak what I know. The spirit of God has made me. And this is why I feel, I guess, the way I am. I'm not very emotional, but it seems like I've been the past few times speaking. And it's because I've really been um, leaning on him, asking him for guidance. And he's been opening the doors for me, left and right. And um, I've found my strength. But when I get in there and I start working, they say, well, she's too emotional. She's too much of a female. She's too woman. I'm a welder by trade. I've carried my acetylene tanks myself, and I've hustled, and I've outworked men, you know, bigger than me. I've hung from rafters. I've, you know, I've worked for some of the biggest companies. I've built custom homes, hundreds of them. They're in the big housing boom in the 2000s. I can do um, construction from floor, you know, concrete all the way up to roofing to finish work. And my husband is one of the most amazing plumbers I've ever seen, the fastest. So we do own our own companies and we do run circles around most people. I will outwork anybody. I am a workhorse. And I keep saying the Republican Party keeps marching these show horses through. They keep dancing for the people. And they keep trying to throw a bridle and a saddle on me. And I keep bucking. That's why they keep saying, just let her buck, let her go better work. So here I am. This is who I am. My name is Karen Bedoni, and I'll keep saying that Bedoni, like a bee, and dough, like bread, in your knee, on your leg, Bedoni. It's, it's a really simple name. But my children are all with us. They prayed for us last night. They texted us this morning. They said they prayed for us this morning. My children are praying children. Uh, my baby, my seven-year-old, she made me promise. She says, when you win this thing, Mom, if I have to go to that place called a roundhouse, she says, I will not go unless you let me take my hoverboard. So I promised her that I will let hoverboards be legalized inside the roundhouse. So when you go visit me, I might have a bunch of kids racing around the roundhouse in hoverboards because I let them. And the youth are my greatest asset in this fight. So it's not about us, it's about them. My doors will always be open to them. And if they come to me to talk to me, then I will stop a meeting. I will stop an entire legislative session to let them speak to us. And it's important that we give them that voice, let them understand that the Constitution is for them and they have the right to speak. And then we think that children don't know better. They're watching us. And if we empower them and shape them and give them the American dream based on God and this flag, we can't go wrong. Then we can go home. We can retire and we can sit on our porches and we can smile and know that we gave it all we got. And that's why I can't be bought and paid for. Because I do believe there are gates of heaven. And Grandpa's waiting for me. And I, I want to walk. I don't want to beg. I don't want to get on my knees and cry saying, I'm so sorry, I messed up. I want to stand there and say, I gave it all I had. I did it in your name. So that's who I am. <clears throat> and I, I'm trying my best to, um, to ensure that we survive and our state is the most um, sought after state in this whole mess of um, liberal, leftist, communistic overtaking. And it's because we're sitting on a gold mine. Our resources are massive underneath us. We are the poorest population with the richest resources. And the same thing I will say about my tribe, we are the most heavily funded people in America with the poorest population, and it's by design. We have to fight with what's under our feet, and we will close our borders if we have to, and we can self-sustain. We will eat New Mexico beef and poultry, peanuts and dairy, and I will go to every school system and every hospital and make sure that they are actually buying New Mexico. We will get back on our feet and we will get back to work. I will take down the red tape for small businesses to make it so easy for you to start a business where we see entrepreneurship skyrocket. And if I can get all of us to make some money in that sense, in that spirit, and we all hire one to two New Mexicans, we will wipe out our unemployment rate. We will actually smash Trump's little, I what was his, his percentage was getting really tiny, and we will smash it. We will actually save ourselves, and we have to do it. Live in the 14%, we can do it. Same thing, we get everything back online, because I believed Joe Biden that was installed up there, 
um, is screwing up so bad that we will have a Republican president again. They will say America first, and you will need to have a governor out there that's willing to fight to put New Mexico first on that list. They will buy our oil first, or he, they don't want to tangle with me. And when you go send a Navajo woman to negotiate, because she won't stop, and she'll get it, and she'll come back out with more. So I have a lot of inspiration because you know what? I have hope in my heart. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't believe it. But the forensic audit I know needs to happen. The truth needs to come out. And we have a lot of um, findings that have come out. And it's really so maddening when you hear it. And we're going to do our best to get it out to the public. Um, saying that, if we can't do it, we will move on forward because people say, well, why do we keep worrying about 2020? Because a lot of legislation went through. If we have um, leadership that was installed as well, they pushed these um, policies upon us this past year that are kicking us right now. If we can unravel those on the basis of they were never actually represented, um, elected legally, then all of that goes away and we can actually reset. So it's important for us to keep fighting it. I would like to go all the way back to 2016. I want to know if MLG was actually put there or she was installed as well. <clears throat> and I also need to know was our Republican Party um, complacent, and why were they? And how dirty is our, our, our party? And I will say this, my Republican Party is not backing me, not because I'm a bad Republican, it's because I'm saying the things that they're scared for me to say. I'm going to say the truth. I'm going to speak the truth with God's word. In saying that, um, I told Steve Pierce that I will fight you to save my party. I've been a Republican, I am no walk away. Just because I'm Native American doesn't make me a Democrat. I've been a Republican since I was eight years old, since Ronald Reagan came on the TV and I was playing jacks and he talked about less government. He talked about when the government comes for you, then you're in trouble. And I heard him and I was eight and I listened and I was sitting there inside boarding school where everything I owned in war was from the government. The toothbrushes, the toothpaste, the food, everything was government and federally controlled. I came from that environment and it's not, it's not a fun one. And I knew this and I have been a Republican since. But out of respect, as Native America should know, in 1924, Calvin Coolidge signed into act, the um, Indian Civilization Act. We were finally made Americans and we were gifted the Constitution. So it's important for me to be a Republican, to be a conservative, and to keep that history. But by no means does this party control me. I make the party interesting, but they don't control who I am, and I will not bend. Uh, you know, a, a sh Grandpa says you have to have a, a backbone of steel, and it's iron, and, and, and that's who I am. So um, I guess we can wrap it up now, but um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the flag because I know I have veterans in here. And to let you know that my patriotism runs deep, according to my grandfather, and you heard this story. Um, the blue in the flag, I don't know if we have the flag here, yeah. It's, um, it represents the ocean and the sky above us and below us. And it's, it's, it's godly, and it's huge, and it's massive, and we can't even wrap our head around it. We don't even know how deep the ocean really goes. I don't even think we've even explored it that far. And the sky as well, when we're trying to launch things into space. And it's to let us know that we are very tiny beings and that our problems and things that we think are impossible to understand, that it's nothing compared to the sky and the ocean. So keep going. And it's representation of God and who he is and what he stands for. Just don't question it. But know that every day you wake up, the sky is there and the oceans are there. Um, the stars are a representation, he said, as representative um, of the holy people. And they're always up there, usually in the same system and the same movement. And they never change, just like the Constitution. It's there for you and it's set in stone. And it's who we are, your First Amendment, your right to pray, your right to say what's right, your right to carry and bear arms all the way through, your right to vote. And it's a representative means all the people in the population, you have the right to be represented. And you can also step up and shine as bright as you can and become that representative if you need to. The stars are important for us to know that there is hope and there are systems in it, so we can't just go rogue and act crazy. You know, you have to also take your place. So if I am a female, then I am female. I am not going to try to be a man. 
my husband's not going to put on a dress. You know, we're not going to do things that way because it is who we are as people. Where you were born and how you were born, and it's up to you to make sure you make the best of it. When I'm a, I go home and I, I enter my doors, I return to being a wife, being a loving wife and a loving mother. And I'm not a campaign um, person in my home, and um, I take my place as such. But when I leave there, I'm an American, I put my boots on and we go for it. So that representation allows you to know that there are systems in place, but there is hope. And the red and the flag is always about um, the blood of Jesus. And some people don't agree with that, but that's how I was taught. And so you take it as, as you will. But it's also how he died for our sins and how we were able to um, always get back up if we've fallen. You can stand back up and try again. And you keep trying all the way to the bitter end. You never quit. And that's what makes good business people is you never quit. And failure is actually badges of honor. But the, the blood also represents the, the soldiers that lost their lives in all these wars for our freedom and who we are and how we're able to wrap ourselves every night in that protection to know that we are free. We are the greatest country in the world, and it's because of the blood that was spilt. And we have to honor that, and that's why the flag should never touch the ground. And that's why we always pledge allegiance to it. We never burn it, and that's why we... Our hearts go out to our veterans and our code talkers, and, and our, our tribe has the most enlisted military than all minorities combined. We are understanding of what it takes to stand up as warriors and fight for what you love and what you believe in. The white in that flag is innocence. It's, it's, it's of the promise of God and Jesus that there is hope. It's also the innocence of the unborn, the, the babies, the children we need to protect. And it's also about hope in the future and projections forward. So it's important that you understand that there is hope, and I'm standing here as inspiration to tell you that I'm going to try to carry that flag as best as I can. It's heavy. It fell on November 3rd. I went home and I cried January 6th. It was getting beat up pretty good. I picked up that flag because how, how naive was I to believe that one man could save this country, that I gave him all that and, that, all that and made him re-responsible for it. And I dusted myself off, wiped my tears, and I picked up that flag for New Mexico. And I'm walking with it, and it's heavy. And I'm asking each and every one of you, if you believe what I'm saying, because I'm giving you what's inside of me. I'm not talking from my mouth, and these aren't political words, because I'm a people -tician, not a politician. I'm asking you to carry that flag with me. And it's going to be hard, but we can do it. And I see a window. I see us celebrating. I see us making it in there, and I see us working. I believe in term limits, and so I also think that I have eight years when I get in there, and the clock is ticking. I want to get in and get out, change everything, hand it off to the next best elected official, and I want to go home. I want to go home right now, but I can't because I'm on a mission right now. So but I need, need you to, I guess, just um, think about it. Go to the other candidates. Ask them the questions. Feel it. Watch them. Do your homework, research, and find your best candidate. And then just to follow your heart, but you got to do the work with us. If we just sit here and expect everyone, someone to help me, it's not going to work. Because the way we're taught, if you want something, you work for it 99% of the time, and God will bless you with that last 1%. We have to do the work. God will bless us, but we have to take that flag 99% of the way, and then God will come in and do the rest. But I always start my, my speeches with a prayer before I come in. I went into the bathroom real quick, and I sat here for a second. So we were in a prayer the whole time. And I always say, you know, let my words be my prayer. And I humbly ask that God really blesses each and every one of you, that you remember my words, and that you fill my heart, and that you're able to carry this with you to, to give to others and to gift to them. Let them know that there is hope. There is a candidate that is real. There is one of you out there fighting for you. And that I want you to carry that and not forget. Don't let it go. And take care of yourselves. And may you always be safe in your homes. And I say these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
Well, um, every time she speaks, it, it just hits me. You know, it, it really does. I've, I've never worked, and I've said this a couple times today, and I say this all the time when we're together. It's, it's, she comes down here. She, she travels. She does this stuff. She'll come down here. She came down for our fundraiser last night that we set up for her, this group of us. And uh, I asked her, I'm getting baptized tomorrow, and I asked her to come for that. And she, was, she stayed because she was going to attend. Things came up. Things happened. And, you know, I, I appreciate that, and I have no problem with it. But what other candidate would do that for a regular person? I don't donate a lot of money to her. I don't have a lot of money to donate to her. There's no candidate out there that would do that. So, you know, she's an inspiration to me. She's an inspiration to my friends, Vicente and Lucy there, uh, to my wife. So um, I'm hoping we can have her back. Um, I'm grateful to Pastor Duane and the church that they let us come do this. Um, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, if, um, one thing that she needs, she didn't ask for it, but I will for her, she needs money. Because we got to fight, we've got to fight the cog. Um, I come here every Sunday, well, if I can. So if anybody wants to donate, they can. If they want to donate down the line, they can. You can go to her website, BenoniTuff.com, donate there, or you can uh, write a check out to, me, to her, give it to me, and I'll get it to her. So we'll take care of it. Um, oh, and by the way, since we're on the topic of running, um, I'm gonna be running for District 37 against uh, Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> so I'm, in, I'm, I'm kind of saying this ahead, and I need help. Uh, I need spiritual help. I need uh, physical help. I need financial help. So a um, couple bucks here, a couple bucks there. Same thing with her. Same thing with all the candidates you find that you like. You, lip service gets us nowhere. We can, um, oh, God, how can I say this and be kind <laughs> old sailor thing here I was about to say the you know B and C <laughs> we can complain all we want but unless we get out and do something and fix it actually fix it we're not gonna get anything done and that's why I'm doing this and that's why she's doing this and she gave me the inspiration to do this again and uh, she gives me the inspiration to, to do this stuff for her and so but anyways enough about that enough about me um, again, Karen, thank you for coming down and coming to my church and speaking to my people I go to church with. And uh, thank you for even agreeing. And I, like I said, I know that you, you know, you got things that came up, and I appreciate that. And I hold, you know, I, I want you to know, I hold no, there's no animosity that you would come and, and, and agree to be to my baptism, even though things change. That means so much to me, so uh, I think we're done. Marco! Right on. My name is Karen Bedoni, and I'm an American, Native American, Navajo woman. My Navajo name means one who goes to war and then returns. I do not go to quit, give up, nor falter. I go to complete a task. I am a woman of courage and have worked tirelessly to formulate a liberating plan for the beautiful state of New Mexico. I am a woman of God and a wife that believes in this country. Of all the history and the tragedy of New Mexico, we have now come together as a people, together as one, and I'm here to unite us. I carry my rifle not to project the fear of gun violence by the media, nor notions of ignorance for responsible gun ownership. I carry to establish my constitutional right as an American. 
A compelling visual of an American woman with her rifle is the most solid statement of belief and respect for the greatest gift of a republic, the Constitution. I am a constitutionalist, simply said. I am so very thankful. For in 1924, a Republican president by the name of Calvin Coolidge, by declaration, gave Indian country citizenship. The Grand Old Party was established to end slavery. It surrounded its ideals with conservatism. I am a Republican based on the original merit of the party, but my heart breaks in today's arena. Today I stand as an American. I have respect for the moderate Democrat that are also the same as my Democratic parents. The common ground is based on conservatism. It's the teachings that have shaped my life to become a loving person and a hard worker. The heaviest burdens that weigh on my mind are what we need to do to save our state. Energy, safety, law enforcement support, education, reducing taxes, cutting the red tape for small businesses, freedom, independence, jobs, agriculture, forestry, and all of our many precious industries here in New Mexico. And we also need to keep God in our endeavors. And my most important concern is that we reduce government and not let it hinder and hurt our families and let us stand together as one to protect them as the way we should. My name is Karen Bedoni and I am now declaring my candidacy for governor of the state of New Mexico. That is why, as your governor, I will not be intimidated nor defeated. As God is my witness, armed with the Constitution, I refuse to go quietly into the socialistic night. I believe the Second Amendment of the Constitution is absolute, written so beautifully that the builders of this nation installed these rights to withstand tyranny and the trampling of our liberties and freedoms. As a mother of five daughters, we will bear arms to protect ourselves. Missing, murdered, and indigenous women is real and is also unresolved. But my concerns don't just stop there. I will apply a stringent immigration policy that will require a legal process of immigration for the safety and security of all. I will not tolerate human trafficking, especially the trafficking of young children. I am pro-life and I will fight for our state to be a pro-life state. Adoption is the most loving alternative to abortion. I will focus on our youth. No child should be hungry. No child should be abused. I will seek the steepest punishment for a child that has been neglected, abused, harmed, or murdered. New Mexico needs a tough governor with a motherly heart, caring hands, and calluses of real work the truest values of an intentional American. I am a New Mexican, I am a mother, I am a wife, I'm a business owner, I'm a fighter for the people. I humbly ask for your prayers of support and protection of what is still good and righteous in our state. I pray that this campaign is untouched by evil. Let my words be my prayer, in Jesus' name, amen. My name is Karen Bedoni, and I approve this message. My name is Karen Bedoni.